Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Jonathan Williams, and I'm Chief Executive of Marine Southeast. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, the work we've been doing on making marine renewable energy more competitive. Now, you may be thinking that's really a game for the big boys, um, but our experience is that there's a lot of opportunities for smaller firms to be really to play a key role in, in making that happen. And I'm just going to give you a very quick um, uh, overview of two projects that we're doing to demonstrate that. But the first thing is, how do we identify the opportunities? Where are the opportunities to drive down or to improve that competitive position? And th the logic is very simple, that every tonne of steel or concrete that you have to put offshore uh, and make it survive offshore is expensive. So if we're going to, make, going to address this competitiveness challenge, we need to do uh, one of two things. Firstly, to work with the supply chain to identify how costs along that supply chain can be reduced. Um, and there's plenty of opportunities for that, working with the sort of companies who, who, who do the, the, the picks and shovels role in the supply chain. And secondly, finding additional revenue streams that you can, you can use on your expensive asset, which is the, the, uh, the, the structure at its foundations. So to give you an example of the, of the first type of project, this is a, um, looking at anchoring. Now, anchoring things to the seabed is fundamental to anything you want to do offshore. So getting the, the technology right for that is clearly crucial. And what we know from the work that's been done uh, over last few years is that the scope for cost reduction in foundations, in installation of these devices and in operations and maintenance are uh, all relating to the high cost of doing anything offshore with vessel costs and so on. So the key thing about new anchoring approaches is how can you make it more efficient? So we so this was a, a, an early stage project funded under the Energy Entrepreneurs Fund. Um, and the picture on the left is, a, is, a, is an early prototype which was developed in a project in partnership with Sustainable Marine Energy, which is a small firm. And um, what it is, is a screw anchor. It's a device for installing screw anchors on the seabed remotely. Um, and this has many advantages uh, over traditional types of anchor. So that's been used now in anger for installing four anchors, which uh, sustainable marine energy needed for their prototype devi uh, device. Um, and we're just working up now an investment case for a bigger version, which will be able to compete with the drag embedment anchors, which are traditionally used by people like Principal Power, some of the bigger companies involved in offshore wind. So that's uh, more information on that available in a pitch, which I'll be giving later on. The second example I want to give you um, is a, a, an ongoing project funded un under the Energy Catalyst program. And this is about combining two functions, in this case wind, wind energy and aquaculture, to use common infrastructure, common structure. Um, on the left, what you've got is uh, two single-use devices. So you have on the top, the, this is a, 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 a structure uh, developed and built by a French company, Ideal, with a single wind turbine on it. Um, and just to give you a feel for the dimension of that foundate, that, that box type structure is about 40 meters on each side. It's quite big. Um, and underneath it is the Ocean Farm offshore aquaculture facility developed and built and now deployed uh, by the big Norwegian company, Kongsberg. And so what we want to do is to look and see, well, what, how can we integrate those functions, aquaculture and, and wind, on a, single, on a single foundation? What are the synergies? Of course, there might be potential conflicts we need to be aware of. And perhaps most interestingly, what kind of business model would, could apply there? Could we, for example, be thinking about a, a, um, a freeholder-type model where the freeholder will then lease access to the structure to to companies that can use it for deploying the facilities that they want. So that's ongoing work, and we're working with two uh, small engineering companies on that. Uh, the Offshore Renewable Energy Catapult is doing the cost analysis, and a South African partner, interesting role. Um, they are, um, so that's, the, that's what the project's about. 
Uh, it's developing the specification in preliminary engineering. But the South African partner is interesting because they're bringing a sort of gateway into Southern Africa. We're interested in that because um, we think that, uh, well, we know that the cost of energy in some of these locations is very high. Small island developing states can be costing them as much as 60 cents per kilowatt hour for their electricity. So the hurdle is much lower. Um, and equally, they often have depleted fisheries. The, the, the idea of a sustainable offshore aquaculture capability becomes very attractive. So the South African partner is, is going to bring that capability and we're looking at a deployment site initially off the south coast of South Africa. John, so can we bring it to a conclusion? We certainly oh, can. Sorry, we certainly can. Um, that's the conclusion. Um, more information available on, uh, on our stand. My, my colleague Simon Powell and myself will be there to answer any further questions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.